Finalist number four is Dr. Mike Amor, who's uh, from the, our National Institute for Complementary Medicine. Um, Dr. Amor has a PhD in acupuncture from this university, and his topic this afternoon is the problem of period pain. Um, where's Mike coming? We're um, adjusting the lapel mics for Mike. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Dr. Mike Amor. Imagine a condition that even by the most conservative of estimates affects at least half of all women. Something that's negatively affected either you or someone you love, your mum, wife, sister, daughter. And then imagine everyone thinks this is normal and perfectly fine. I'm talking about period pain. Our research has shown that over 90% of young Australian women aged 14 to 25 suffer from period pain on a pretty regular basis. The majority of these young women will suffer from primary dysmenorrhea, where the pain is caused by changes in hormones called prostaglandins. But for at least one in 10, something more sinister can be going on under the surface, such as endometriosis. This pain is not a minor niggle, it's not just an inconvenience. Our research has shown that almost half of women miss school or university due to their pain. And even when they're there, their test-taking abilities and their classroom performance is negatively impacted. And this is occurring at a time in their life where their academic outcome is critical. Our team thinks this has to change. We have recently done the largest survey worldwide of young women, their knowledge and the impact of menstrual pain. What we found was a very clear understanding that young women just didn't know what was normal. They didn't know how to treat their menstrual pain and really concerningly, they didn't know when they needed to go and see a doctor for further investigations. They indicated they just didn't have the right information. So we asked these young women, how do you want us to give you this information? And they overwhelmingly said, it needs to be done via a mobile phone. So in conjunction with our partners and other experts, we developed an online web resource. A critical part of this new resource is the use of a tool called PIPA, developed by our friends at the Canberra Endometriosis Centre. In a world first, this tool uses five simple questions to be able to screen women to see if they're at high risk of endometriosis. And if they are, they get an email asking them to go and see their doctor, and we send them a letter to take with them so they know exactly what to say and what to ask. The aim of this is to reduce the over two and a half year delay that our research has found occurs between the onset of young women's symptoms and their visit to a doctor. By providing this through a web-based platform, we can access inf women no matter where they are, whether they're in the center of Sydney or the middle of nowhere. And we can do it for free as long as they have a cell phone with an internet plan. And for women who come from a culture or a family, we're talking about menstruation as taboo, we can provide this information where they don't need to have a difficult conversation with their family. But like G.I. Joe says, knowing is only half the battle. So for the majority of women who don't have endometriosis, we have a range of evidence-based self-management techniques that we provide. These are things like yoga postures, acupressure, dietary advice, all delivered via short YouTube-style clips. Now, despite my hairstyle, this is actually quite early in my academic career, but <laughs> we are already having the impact that we desire. We are getting the discussion about the normality of period pain out there. I've recently been on Triple J Hack and on the ABC Evening News talking about how menstruation impacts school performance. And this started a national discussion on the importance of paid menstrual leave. 
I was then invited back to Triple J Hack to talk about women with endometriosis and how they can improve their self-management. Because of this, we've been contacted by Health Minister Greg Hunt and his team to talk about ways to increase alternative pain relief access for women with endometriosis. Women are desperately interested in this information. The ABC News Facebook post alone got 6,500 likes. It reached 80,000 women on the Endometriosis Australia Facebook page, with hundreds of likes and hundreds of shares. Additionally, I've written three articles for the conversation on endometriosis and period pain. And finally, because young girls are getting their periods earlier and earlier, we've partnered with Big Film Company to make Period Talk. This is a fantastic resource to use either in the classroom or at home, and it's aimed at girls aged 9 to 12. So rather than trying to change entrenched beliefs, we're demystifying periods before they even get them. So we can reach hundreds of thousands of young Australian women. We can reduce the incidence of undiagnosed endometriosis, and we can do it all with just a cell phone. A question, please. Everybody's quiet today. Um, Imogen, if you use yours, I'll take this microphone down to Professor I'm Dunn and phone. he can <laughs> ask his afterwards. Um, thank you. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, how is your app available to people in an ongoing way? So at the moment, we are still, we're actually trialling this intervention. So we're about two thirds of the way through our trial. So the project's only been going on for 18 months so far. Um, but what we intend to do is we've actually been speaking to Family Planning New South Wales, as well as our sponsors, um, Kimberly Clark, and they've indicated that there is an ongoing need for this kind of free platform. We've actually already started discussions with um, Endometriosis Australia to put forward an application to, rate, to basically turn this into an app because apparently our websites are now very 2017 um, and so going forward we really want to make this into an app so it's modular, we can push information, pull it out and we can collect more information. Kevin. Yeah, thanks Mark. Um, What's the uh, level of confidence predictability on the five screening questions? And the other side of that, is there any risk of any false negatives? So the, um, the five screening questions, if they score a four or a five, um, then that puts them in uh, a score that only 12% of the Australian population meet. So we do say on the website and in the email that we send them, there is no perfect screening question. Endometriosis can only be diagnosed via invasive surgery. So, but this gives a very strong indication that it's unlikely that their pain is normal. At the very least, even if it's not endometriosis, they really should be going to speak to their medical professional about it because it's, the questions measure both severity of pain and impact on their life. So it's likely if they leave it untreated, it's going to lead to things like excessive school absenteeism. Okay, please join me in thanking Dr. Mike Amore. <laughs>